Hi, my name is Jennifer Ibaz. Let's get equipped in the supernatural. Hi, everybody. I just want to welcome you and just uh, invite you to share this broadcast with your friends, um, whatever platform that you're you're uh, on. And I um, just want to introduce Lana Vazer from Australia. I'm sure that you know her. I'm sure you're familiar with her materials and have seen her prophetic words. Um, and so I just want to um, invite Lana to go ahead and just share with everybody um, Share uh, what what you enjoy, what your hobbies are, what you like to do. Tell us about your family, and just go for it. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me, Jennifer. This is such a joy. Um, well, I'm Lana. I'm married to Kevin, and we uh, live in South Australia. And um, right now, I would say we are having a wonderful time, uh, just exploring what the Lord has uh, for this new era, and just building with Him in new ways. I absolutely have found a passion in the last month. Now, you may laugh at me, but I love gardening. Who would have known? that I love to garden. <laughs> so that has become one of my hobbies lately, to go and potter out in the garden and to try and not kill plants and uh, and help them grow. And I have my own little garden happening at the moment. Um, <laughs> so I've really enjoyed that lately. So um, I've been doing that with my three beautiful boys. I have Elijah, who is uh, 11. I have Judah, who is uh, six, and Benjamin, who is two. So uh, as you can imagine, our house is very loud and very fun. Um, but we, yeah, we're just enjoying this time, just really being together and a lot more time as a family. So it's been wonderful. Good. So what do you like to grow? Well, which I have grown sunflowers with my husband recently. Uh, we've tried a few spices and as of last week, I'm growing some jasmine and uh, and some other flowers. So one of them, I had an epic fail the other day, realized you're meant to keep it in the sun all day and I didn't and it, it had almost died, but I put it in the sun and I spoke life to it. <laughs> and then, and well, we do, right? Yeah. And be, now with, the boys, with all those boys, do you have pets too, like kind of crazy? Crazy pets, you know. Oh, I want to have pets, but because we've done so much traveling um, oh. over the last couple of years, we haven't had any pets. But uh, I would love to have a dog. I really oh, would. Yeah. <laughs> now, how long have you been married? I mean, because yeah. you just look like you have a vibrant family and marriage, and you know, longevity in marriage, especially when you're a prophet. I, that's that's a skill. I think it's an art. <laughs> Well, we got married uh, in 2007. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, what's that now? Gosh, you have to do the maths. But yeah, almost for, 20 years. So. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's been it's been glorious. Yeah, That's it's been great. a wonderful journey. Have you been able uh, to travel inside Australia? Is that starting to happen for you? Or are you just it's mostly concentrating um, yeah. doing the ministry? Is it more gone online, like so many of us have done? Yeah, yeah, we've transitioned to um, we've been doing some online schools and a lot of uh, a lot of media, which is so wonderful. Um, uh, now we're starting our borders within Australia are starting to open and there's yeah. movement between different states. But yeah, that's only been recent. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, this has been uh, much longer than any of us ever considered. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I think I've learned to stay like super positive. I, it's been like a character building time for me, you know, and and uh, don't complain. Praise the Lord and keep praying for freedom. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I wanted to to really the reason I even it, uh, asked you to do this with me is mm -hmm. something that happened. Um, it's been like three or four months, I think, mm -hmm. at least. But I noticed like. For me, it was in the summer. I came out with this prophetic word in the summer and there's this whole thing behind it. And it's been like building, you know, how it is, it kind of like builds yeah. for several months sometimes. And, and it landed, um, you know, into this word, the Lord started talking to me about endurance at the end of 2019. It was all very dramatic. And there's like, like specialized shoes involved, you know, prophetic signs. Oh, you know, yes. Okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, dreams and, and code yeah. words. And it was just crazy. Oh, I love it. All right. So then it lands. Okay. So this word was like building on each other. 
And so then it lands on this whole thing about the second wind, how the Lord is giving his people a second wind. So put it out there, you know how we do that. And then not too long after, I see a word from a friend of mine, okay, a friend of mine. And a friend, and that friend has this word. And I think they just did it in one line on their on their social media. Like the Lord's saying there's a second wind. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, that's interesting. And then I see this this whole prophetic word come out with with you. And it was about the second wind and prophets in the second wind. I'm like, okay, the Lord's speaking. You know, he speaks in two or three, you know, uh, times, you know, there's a coincidence involved. So, so behind all of that was why I want to get you on here. And I wanted to talk to you and talk with you about this uh, second wind. But um, I think it's important to establish a baseline before we go there. Um, Lana, when it comes to prophets and prophetic people, how would you like, you know, very quickly, how would you define them just so people are not confused and they understand when we're talking about prophets and prophetic words, because we have all sorts of people coming on right now. We want to make sure that they know what we're talking about. Yeah, that's really good. I remember um, actually as a young believer, I was really confused between, oh, what's a prophet and what's a prophetic, like a prophetic person. And I remember being at uh, Bethel actually, and Chris Ballatin said something that really marked me. And he said, uh, prophets are the message. He said, and they equip the saints for the work of ministry. And that really began me on a journey of just defining, oh, what is a prophet? So a prophet, someone that hears the voice of God and is specifically called in the office to then equip the saints uh, for the work of ministry through their prophetic words, through their teaching, through the impartation to begin to um, really bring the, the people of God into a place of recognizing the voice of the Lord and, and calling forth the, the time and the season uh, that we're in and giving to the people of God direction. Um, and so I think that we can make a really clear uh, distinction that way in the sense that the prophet, you know, is the message. So many times, like I have have prophets live parables. I'll walk something oh, and yeah. you know, that's my, <laughs> then I end up prophesying. Um, and so I, I just, yeah, I think um, Chris also says that prophets are the, the gift to the body um, and also then a prophetic person carries the gift. And so um, I hope that that that's makes beautiful. That's wonderful. Clearly. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, so you're starting this garden. <laughs> I wonder where that's going. Okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When I called it the, my plant back to life the other day, I'm like, there's a message in this. <laughs> Definitely, for sure. Um, I think that's really, really clear. Um, and I love what you said about the prophetic parable. I'm very much that way. It's like almost like bizarre. <laughs> you know? And so, um, uh, so back to you, back to you the second wind and for you it was encouragement for prophets um and there's been some time between that word uh when you first gave it and now and i was wondering like you know what did you think about it then and what do you think about it now because you know how prophetic words they kind of unfold they kind of unpack over time yeah. and so tell us tell us more about that yeah, so um, it ended up, I was having um, time with the Lord and I went into this encounter and the Lord said to me, I want to show you something. And my eyes were opened and I saw like so many prophets across the body of Christ. And the words that I saw were intense battles and relentless opposition. And I saw such a battle weariness uh, that was over the prophets. And as I looked uh, closer, I saw them and they were really crying out to the Lord because they were so tired from the fight. And as they were crying, out, I heard what I can only describe as the thundering voice of God. And he said this, prophets, here comes your second wind. And straight away, like I knew what a second wind was in my own mind, right? It's like it's this new strength, this new energy, this new empowerment. And the Lord began to speak to me that, that, that there was a reviving and a refreshing and a vitality, uh, an empowerment that was coming upon the prophets. Um, this was in November, I think I got this word. Yeah. Um, to really um, cause them. And the Lord even said to restore the spring in their step. And there was so much about that in the sense that not only was the Lord bringing healing, that was a big thing that I kept seeing. The Lord wanted to heal the hearts of prophets mm -hmm. that had really 
traumatized and uh, really wearied from the relentless opposition. Um, but I also saw that there was a, um, a rejuvenating and this empowerment of the spirit was not only breaking this heaviness that they were carrying, this attack, but there was also a breaking of fog, of, of a, um, almost like a daze. I kept hearing the Lord say, I'm going to break the haze, and there was a fresh clarity that was going to come upon these prophets in this empowerment of the Spirit. And as I've really begun to, um, like I even went back this morning and, and looked at the Word again yeah. and was like, okay, Lord, like where are we at right now? I, I really believe that this Word right now, that this second wind that the Lord is bringing is not only to bring that, um, that empowerment again to cause you to run further than you've ever been right. and to run in ways that you never have before. Um, I saw new assignments and I actually put that in the Word at the end that there was um, in this um, second wind, not only mm -hmm. was the Lord bringing to a greater wholeness and healing and empowerment to go further, but there were also new assignments uh, that were going to be entered into to run with God and to to not be held back by, um, I want to say, the, the past battles and, th and the weariness that has really tried to take you out. And also, uh, Jennifer, like this word I had was specifically for prophets, but since then the Lord has really uh, taken me into different encounters and said to me, I'm releasing a second wind like over my saints, like over my people, mm -hmm. like there are so many weary saints they're so um battle weary and my my breath is coming to bring them back to life again wow that's so powerful and it almost feels like we're in this big rest right now that's mm -hmm. how it's felt to me uh, you know it's just been that's the sense i have um it has been weary at least in the u.s um i mm -hmm. i'm sure it has been in your nation as, as well um, we had some we had some different battle fronts um, between the mm -hmm. two nations, obviously. And so that is just like really powerful. Um, you know, for me, mine was uh, the Lord was telling me about endurance. Um, he started talking to me about endurance and, you know, being um, uh, ready and trained and equipped, you know, mm -hmm. for endurance. But still the Lord bringing that second wind so that you can finish your fight, you can finish your race. And um, for mine, it was more about the body of Christ in general. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and he was talking to me about that fall season as well and about, you know, keeping the faith and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, you know, so it's just interesting how the Lord was just really, you know, he was speaking to these things, but let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's get to the practicalities about it. You know, <laughs> I love, I love like the prophetic words. It's like, it puts this framework. And it's like, okay, mm -hmm. this in the Lord, um, this is, this is what he's doing. Okay. But, but the practicalities, like how do you, in, in this kind of battle where we just, you know, for, for those of us who are accustomed to traveling, um, you know, like, like our anointing flows in, in the ministry meetings, you know, um, there's a life flow that comes to us, you know, just like where all of our, our life flows seem to have been like disrupted, <laughs> you know, um, you, you know, they like, like I went to, I went to this, um, I preached somewhere. I can't remember where I was at, but I went to preach somewhere. Um, I think, oh, it was at my own church. Uh, I'm, that's so funny. It was a Sunday <laughs> night. It was at my own church. And this is like recently. And because I haven't been preaching for so long, I was like, I wonder if I'm even anointed. That's <laughs> And then I was, I was at our, uh, one of our campuses and I, I was like, I need to test this. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't scheduled over there. I was just, you know, in the service. So I hopped into the prayer line. And I begin to pray for somebody and I watched them like fly, you know, fly onto the floor. And I'm like, oh, good. I still got it. Because, <laughs> you know, you're, you're just kind of like out of sync all the time. Yeah. OK, yeah. so the practicalities. OK, yes. so you're going to step into new assignments. You're going to get a second wind. Um, you're feeling of being beat up and all of that. That's going to shift, you know, uh, heart healing, trauma healing. Practically, like, what do you do? You know, how do you align yourself to that? Like practically. Yeah. 
That's really good. And I love that question because I, I just, I love seeing, I love seeing the prophetic word of the Lord land, right? If he's speaking yeah. something, well, how do I grab that and run yeah. with it in my own life? Yeah. Um, so this word very specifically, I, I looked through the word and I saw that there were main themes God was speaking, right? So he's speaking about strengthening, healing, empowerment to go further than you've ever been, new assignments. And I would then go to the Lord and say, all right, Lord, you're saying healing. So healing of the heart, Holy Spirit, I, I I ask that you would come and you would examine my heart in the light of your presence. You know, if there is anything within me, I'm creating space in my life right now. I'm stopping. I'm not being distracted. And I'm giving you this time to come and allow you to do heart surgery on me. And so I would very much um, take, break down the word and then begin to go to the Lord and say, right, this is what you said and, and, and give him the space to do that. Then with the, um, so with the, uh, the endurance, like you're going to run further than you've ever been and you're going to uh, move into new assignments, I would then go to the Lord and say, all right, Lord, how do I get prepared? What do I need to do? Instead of sitting back and going, right, God's going to do all of this and it's going to be great. What's my part? How do I position myself to be ready to run with these new assignments? And the Lord would then begin to give me strategy on, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to build this or do this. And, and there was really this partnership that would begin to, to form as I would uh, lean into the Lord and ask him what he was saying. Very much, I'm very big on decree. If the Lord has said it, like I'm not moving on it and I will speak it out of my mouth. And so coupled with that place of every day, I would say to the Lord, okay, come, you know, you know, heal my heart, do what you need to do. How do I get ready? I watch what I speak. I'm like, thank you, Lord, that the second wind is is blowing upon my life. Thank you, Lord, this is my time of healing. Thank you, Lord, like this is my time of renewed strength. And just really sitting at the feet of Jesus, like really making that time just to rest and allow his, his spirit to minister to me and keeping words like this at the forefront of our eyes is so important. You know, the word the Lord gave me uh, in 2020 was that it was going to be a year of bold faith and that we were in this new era moving into a time of the ferocious focus of faith. And those words the Lord spoke to me were really great visuals for me. So then when I look at words like this, I go, right, I'm going to ferociously focus on what God has promised me right now. I'm going to wage war with this word. I'm not just going to read it and put it on the shelf. This is my word. I'm going to run with this word and I'm going to take what God uh, has for me in this word while at the same time inviting the Holy Spirit to do what he needs to do in my own heart. Wow, that's really powerful. And I like how you break that down. Um, what I hear from you, this is, this is how this resonates with me when you speak, is that you are capable of taking, you know, a prophetic word that's like, you know, looked like it was like two or three pages long to me, I mean, you know, yes. and you're able to very systematically break it down and almost in simplicity, give yeah. it to the Lord um, and, and hold that as your focus. And, and that's amazing because the way you were presenting it is you presented it as I can do this without distraction. Now, I know that that's probably um, more, you know, I'm sure everybody has a certain level of distraction, but you just present it like I, I do this, you know, in an undistracted way and I make yeah. space. Um, and so I think that's really good to hear to just bringing this into simplicity, mm -hmm. just very simply, if this word resonates with you, simply take it and bring it to the Lord for processing um, and get the strategy. I love strategy. Strategy is my thing. Yeah. <laughs> It's important to ask the Lord for strategy, like, uh, and you'll probably laugh at this, but it goes with your endurance word. But when the word Lord was giving me words like this, I said, Lord, what do I do, right, to, to engage with what you're saying? One of the things the Lord said to me was, I want you to go and start boxing. I'm like, excuse me, what did you just say? And he said, go and start boxing. He's like, so I'm going to teach you about endurance and I'm going to teach you about strengthening your muscles and I'm yes. going to teach you. And so part of the strategy of in, even in my own life of walking out a prophetic word, the Lord said to me, go and start boxing. And I have encounters with Jesus while I'm boxing as he begins to speak to me about longevity and, and endurance. So there's, you know, there's different ways in the strategy of God in how to partner with what he's saying. <laughs> 
So when you're smashing those, you know, those bags, yeah. you use like, like Satan and name a genius. Yes. Okay. Right? <laughs> um, so, so what, what is God doing with the prophets in Australia? What, what's happening now? Cause I mean, we haven't seen you in the U S side, you know, for quite a while. We're, we're accustomed to seeing a certain representation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we haven't. Um, so what are y'all doing? Well, a lot of um, prophets right now um, are really in Australia. I'm seeing such a, a unity that is um, coming between the prophets in a way that I've never seen before. Uh, I think it was in November. No, she moved the date oh, a few months ago. I was uh, on the round table for um, the Australian Prophetic Council run by Catherine Ranala and at the Australian Prophetic Summit. And I've been for a few years, I've been honoured to be part of that. But this year there was a difference, like there was yeah. such a a depth and a confirmation and a weight in the words that the Lord was releasing and a unity that was just unprecedented. And so we're seeing as a, um, I would say, as the body of Christ in Australia, I would see, I would say that there's really um, a, a greater awakening to the authentic voice, uh, Australian voice, and the the prophetic voice that flows out of our nation. There's a greater confidence uh, that is happening. Um, there's a greater unity, and there's definitely a, a real reformation of the prophetic just taking place right now. Just that that holiness that a lot of prophets here that I've been speaking to are really feeling, like the the holiness of God, the fear of the Lord, and stewarding prophetic words in the fear of God. It's yeah, it's just been incredible. It's been really that's amazing. amazing. Yeah, I've had Australia with all of that on my radar for like two or three years now. It's it's like, you know, because I know the Lord's been stirring something up very unique and special uh, in your nation, you know, and I'm just so happy to view it and watch and partner where I can. And, um, you know, so it, it's just been something I know the Lord is doing something very impactful there uh, in that community specifically. I've been very aware of that. Um, so so with, you know, what what it, when you're looking. OK, so we see this unity happening with Australian uh, prophets, um, but it doesn't appear the same way in the U.S., at least not with some some of the those that you would see more more um, uh, more often. But but go take a step behind and the voices behind the main voices. There is a unity there. <laughs> you know, yes. Yes. And it's kind of weird. It's like you, you don't really hear the sound of it. And that was it's something I've, I've been concerned about because I know there is a unified sound. But then there's a sound in the front that doesn't sound unified. And I haven't been able to figure that one out yet. And so, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, I, I, I'm really trying to sort out, um, you know, all of this because, you know, it just looks like we had um, a huge hit. Um, with the prophet, with many prophets here. And a lot of people are going back to the drawing board or, you know, they're just reconsidering a lot of stuff as a result of it. I think, I think there's a, a reorg happening yes. um, and um, a reconsecration and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. we, all, we all need that. And so uh, um, I think everybody wants the same goal and that is to hear Jesus, to fix our eyes on Jesus and to um, really get in step with him. So, um, you know, uh, learn. We're, we're, everybody's learning what, what we need to learn, I think. So right. that's exactly <laughs> okay. right. Yes. Yeah. Now, yes. you have a book, um, New Era. Yes. And, um, you know, and, and, and that was another word. I, I didn't get that word, but I know others mm -hmm. that had that word. Um, new era and you had some very specific points uh, in connection to that and you're saying this is this is what the lord is addressing for this new era i don't know if you can just off the top of your head i don't know i write these books and sometimes i forget what i write <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I know I may it's like uh, you talked about demonstration of God's power, yeah. uh, answers to prayer, the fear of the Lord, new assignments, pioneers, yeah. forerunners, um, yeah. the removal of lids and limitations. That's the mm -hmm. one that I was like circling. Um, yeah. I don't feel it so much for myself, but I think it's something that people feel and yes. upgrades and consecration. Um, mm -hmm. What do you want to what do you want to uh, say about that? 
Yeah, I really um with the the taking the lids off, like that was such a, that was that chapter came out of like a, a culmination of encounters that I had with the Lord. But um there was a real uh, sense of the Lord's heart of deliverance uh, upon God's people to really remove the things that have um contained them, whether it's you know, stronghold or oppression or words that have been spoken, belief systems. There was this place where in the new era God was taking those things off and he was bringing uh, raising up a remnant that know who they are in Christ and they know uh, the the sound that they carry, they know their assignment, they know their voice and they're not intimidated by um, the enemy, they're not intimidated by the fear of man. And I began to just see the Lord removing these lids and he would use phrases like the greatest uh, era of deliverance that yeah. we have ever seen like strong words that were like, wow, this is going to be huge. And it was like this acceleration of his spirit. And that I really believe is a, a very powerful word uh, for the body of Christ, especially right now, you know, that the Lord is really um, delivering his people from, you know, the mindsets of Egypt, from those places of slavery and bringing the, the church into a place of really um, knowing who they are and, and the place of, now when I say this, I want to say this carefully, but where there has been an idolizing of platform, you know, yeah. that's that's really caused an intimidation on people yeah. and makes people go, oh, well, I don't carry anything powerful and my yeah. voice isn't as great as the next person. Yeah. But the Lord was really um, shaking that and he was really removing uh, that and awakening the, the people of God to say, hey, you know, I'm living inside of you. This is what I've, I've called you to everywhere your feet tread. Like uh, my spirit is living within you to shift atmospheres, to, you know, release my, my the good news of the gospel and so that was very yeah very um very encouraging chapter but if i could summarize the main themes of the book the lord really spoke to me that that book was um an invitation to really um, uh, learn the ways of God for this new era. When we've entered a new era, God's doing a new thing. He's not moving the same way that he did. His nature remains the same, but his mm -hmm. acts can be different. And so this was a time to really go before the Lord and say, Lord, make me ready. What do I need to do to be ready? How do I partner with you in the things you're going to do? So the revelation of your majesty, the fear of the Lord being restored, the unprecedented demonstrations of power, the prophetic cleansing that's coming, all of those things. God, how do I partner with you to build in a new way that I've never built before? And so, um, yeah, it was a real, that was a, a, a book that was birthed in, a, in some deep wrestles, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's interesting how um, I heard Mario Morello say this one time. He said, it's really in um, many times it's being able to shift your daily routine, you know, just, just a very simple um, structural shift you know, getting God's plan, his strategy. And, you know, after I was, I was looking at some people in the body of Christ that failed, especially during COVID. COVID, I felt brought out anything that was in you, it brought yeah. it brought into the surface. So for all of you who have made it and you're still serving Jesus, I applaud you because <laughs> <laughs> this, this brought things to the surface. And I watch people fail. Um, I watched ministers fail and it was very sad. And I watched uh, ministers that were uh, very more per like it was all it really was about that personality. That's what was, you know, the attraction. Um, it was like the strength and the weaknesses all in one one um, package. And, you know, just simple strategical discussions, you know, as a church, because we're, we're um, how many campuses are we on? We're on like uh, we're, we're moving we have three campuses where we're moving in, we're going to move into a fourth and we're starting to look like that kind of church, you know? Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, how do you not break down uh, mm -hmm. as leaders? How do you do that? And we started saying, get rid of celebrities, yes. you know, celebrities. It's a team. We're doing this as a team. We're locking arms and, mm -hmm. you know, and really just treating each other that way. I, I don't mm -hmm. think we really didn't have that, but to verbalize it, it was a strategic move of how we're going to last in the bigger picture that's coming, coming our way. Um, the whole thing about deliverance is huge. It's so big on my heart. I'm writing a book now, Inner Healing and Deliverance Handbook. Awesome. Yeah, because, um, you know, I just, the Lord has just, show, the last three years, I went through a personal journey and I just learned stuff. And, um, and unfortunately, when you learn stuff, you see stuff 
And I started seeing stuff all over the body of Christ. I'm like, this, this can't be. I started seeing stuff in prophets, not with a critical eye. I wasn't judging them. I'm like, no wonder they're, they're hitting the lid. Yeah. Because you, can, you can't go past the parameters of your heart. Mm -hmm. um, broken hearts, broken lives, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even like in the last month, the Lord has been repeating these words to me over and over again. I'm bringing health and healing to my body. You yeah. know, like that He really cares about the heart. He cares about what goes on inside. And so, I, yeah, I really resonate with that. Like that the Lord's really going after hearts right now to bring a wholeness. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, we look at situations like with um, uh, Robbie, Z Z I can't oh, say yeah. terrible Zachariah. situation, yeah. you know, and like we don't know the trail. We don't yeah. know what started all that. You know, like we don't know the root system. Yeah. And then I'm thinking I, I'm like, we've we've got to have something in place so that even broken people who are in ministry mm -hmm. can find freedom, that yes. they can finish well you know, yes. and, and not break down at some point or have a double life. Yeah. And, you know, um, and even for people who are not in the vis visible eye, but they're, they're, you know, everybody's a minister. Everybody's a full-time minister. We yes. want everybody to finish well. And that whole yeah. thing about deliverance in the heart and what you're saying, you know, yeah. so, yeah. so what would just a simple thing that you've learned about heart healing yeah. that would help somebody just do better hearing you say it. What would you share right now? Um, one thing I would say is uh, to keep short accounts. I know that may sound silly, but when the Lord puts his finger on something to, or you see a pattern in your life or you see something in your heart that you're like, oh, like that's, that's something that really needs healing. There's a brokenness, yeah. there's a trauma. To actually take that before the Lord and and really um, spend time in the Word of God and, and giving the Lord room to make or make space for God to bring healing. I've had a lot of. Um, I am all for having personal ministry. I have had so much prayer ministry and deliverance ministry as a leader over my life. And I will continue to do that because I never want to get to a place where I think, oh, I'm like, I'm all good. I want to continue mm -hmm. to partner with the Lord in a place where I'm like, Lord, any other layers in there? I want you to go yeah. in and I want you to deal with them. The hidden things I don't know about if they're in my heart, any traumas, woundings. And that's a real passion that I, that I carry. And so I would say, keep the short accounts with the Lord in the sense that, you know, if you recognize something go to the lord and say all right lord heal like speak to me heal me i've had lots of encounters where one word out of the mouth of the lord has healed my heart That's like so absolutely true. healed my heart and then other times i've been in a prayer room with other people praying for me and i've been healed so my encouragement would be just don't push it aside and push it down and go oh well oh it's too scary it's too painful I'll just deal with it another day as the lord brings those things up as you recognize those things be intentional to really, um, yeah, partner with the Lord to, to position yourself for healing. Right. I just really have a sense right now that there's some people on the thread that they're dealing with complex situations. It's complex. Um, you know, there's not like this one pat answer. You know how sometimes, I don't know, it kind of drives me nuts. You know, <laughs> you have this altar call and we're going to fix this thing in 10 minutes. And I'm like, that is really not reality for most people. And so... <laughs> You know, and so, so, you know, and I feel like there is some very complex situations. Um, and, and this is what Lana said, that the Lord has a word for you, that there is a word he's going to give you that you're going to know that it's him. Like there's no other, nobody could even make that up. You couldn't make that up. Um, nobody can even articulate that, but it's crafted for you. And I, I feel like the Lord is calling you to his presence to hear that word. And it's going to answer a situation. I feel the presence of the Lord, as I'm saying this, is going to answer that situation. And you're going to be able to walk through complexity. Um, you're going to be able to walk through a very sticky situation and you're going to walk through it successfully. <laughs> and so um, for those of you that, that, that's you, um, uh, you know, blessings, but the Lord's calling you to, to hear his word for you. Um, Lana, do you have anything else you want to share? 
Yeah, just quickly, while you were saying that, Jennifer, um, the Lord reminded me um, in the last couple of weeks, I've been hearing these words, inner turmoil, inner turmoil, inner turmoil, just rumbling around in my spirit. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? And he said, Lana, I'm speaking over those in my my um, my church that are wrestling with inner turmoil, that I'm bringing inner turmoil to rest. And so if that's you, I just I want to prophesy that over you, that there are encounters with the Lord that are upon you right now where you will hear a word of the Lord and it will bring the inner turmoil to rest, whether that inner turmoil is from fear or anxiety or doubt, whatever it may be, that the eyes of the Lord have seen the the unrest that has been within you and that as you go to the feet of Jesus, as you, you sit in his presence, that you will encounter him so powerfully that you will hear his voice and that inner turmoil will be put to rest and you will move into, I'm seeing like a shalom, like I'm seeing... The, the peace that surpasses all understanding, that you will know that peace that we have been given in Christ Jesus that surpasses all natural all natural circumstance, all natural knowledge, that the supernatural peace of the Lord is falling upon your heart as you draw close to him to bring that inner turmoil to rest in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that is so powerful. Everybody, um, again, Lana has some really great books um, that you want to check out. Uh, if you're in Australia, she's doing some online schools. Um, we also have, if you're in Australia, uh, we have a seven day prophetic wisdom challenge. Um, my whole thing is pro prophecy and wisdom must always go together. So yeah. you'll see some links on there. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, um, Lana, I just want to say thank you for um, joining me. It's been great to connect on this oh, online format. This is yes. what we're doing these days, right? You know? Yes, thank oh, you. It's been such a joy yeah. to be with you from All the right. other side of the earth. I know. Um, <laughs> and so do you mind praying over everybody and then we'll we'll go ahead and call it a day. I would love to. Sure. Father, I thank you for every person watching, Lord, and everyone that will watch the replay. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. And Lord, right now, Lord, I pray for a deeper encounter with you. Lord, I just, I release upon uh, people the, the gift of sight, Lord, their eyes to be opened, Lord, prophetic dreams in the night. Lord, I thank you that this is the hour, Lord God, where you are releasing such a clear strategy, Lord, where you are releasing your heart, where you are releasing words, Lord God, that are bringing your people into alignment, Lord, that you are yeah. releasing words that are bringing your people through this place, this beautiful place of purification and preparation, Lord, to be propelled into this new era. So, Lord, I pray that if there are any battle-weary, discouraged hearts, Lord God, that you would breathe upon them, Holy Spirit, that even tonight as they lay their heads on their pillow, Lord, may they encounter you. Lord, may their testimony be one word out of the mouth of the Lord brought healing, brought deliverance, brought freedom, brought activation. It brought the answer that I was looking for. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would go deep within their hearts, Lord, that you would release mm. such a refreshment, a rejuvenation, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, that this is a time, Lord, as we draw close to you, that, yes. that it's a time to thrive. Mm. It's a time to flourish and to blossom in all things that you have prepared for your people. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, I pray a blessing over them today. And I thank you for for them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. And thank you for joining me. And uh, until next time, okay? Bye. All right. Bye-bye.